The Columbia River has been flowing for over a million years. It has seen tumultuous times, lava flows and scouring Ice Age floods. It has fed the first people since time immemorial. It has been a pathway for explorers and an artery for trade. It has been dammed for electricity and its waters have cooled the reactors of the atomic age. It has served as a scenic backdrop for many wonders, like Stonehenge? The original Stonehenge is a Neolithic circular monument of upright stones on Salisbury Plain in what is now England. Some believe it was a sacred place of the Druids, pagan priests first described by Roman conquerors. It is said to have astronomical significance, aligned for the winter and summer solstice. It was built in stages starting about 5,000 years ago, but it still evokes a kind of mystical sense. In the modern world, it has inspired imaginations and imitators all over, many with a whimsical purpose, like Carhenge in Nebraska, a full-size Stonehenge made of junked cars. Future archaeologists might conclude that we once worshipped the automobile, and they'd be right. And one man who was a huge promoter of car-friendly roads was the eccentric millionaire who built his own Stonehenge on the Columbia River near Goldendale, Washington. His name? was Sam Hill, and his version of this strange temple is just one concrete example of his passions. And I mean concrete, literally. Sam Hill was a lawyer, businessman, railroad man, and multimillionaire. He traveled widely, was friends of royalty, he was close with Queen Marie of Romania, for example. James J. Hill, the railroad baron called the empire builder who reshaped the Pacific Northwest over a hundred years ago, was Sam's father-in-law. Sam Hill was rich, well-connected, and had a vision for the region beyond railroads. He advocated building a system of paved roads throughout the state. He had this idea before the first horseless carriage was putt-putting on the streets of Seattle. He decided to build a mansion near Goldendale and had the hopes of attracting a new Quaker farming community to the then remote area on the Washington side of the river. Hill had been raised a Quaker. Hill built it out of steel reinforced concrete. He named it Mary Hill for his wife and daughter, though he rarely saw either of them. It wasn't finished in Hill's lifetime. It became and remains an art museum Hill's biography dubbed him the Prince of Castle Nowhere. The prince of this castle was, however, a tireless promoter of roads. He paved 10 miles of road near his mansion as a demonstration project. His Mary Hill Castle had built-in ramps on either side, so guests arriving by automobile could drive right into its great hall and out the other side. Accommodating autos was the future. His advocacy played a role in Oregon's building the scenic highway that runs along its side of the Columbia through the gorgeous gorge. Hill was a founder of the Washington Good Roads Association, which in turn led to the creation of the Washington State Department of Transportation. The infrastructure for autos owes a lot to Sam Hill. Hill traveled to Europe during World War I and was horrified at the human cost of the conflict. After visiting Stonehenge, he decided to build a replica at Mary Hill dedicated to those from Klickitat County who had given their lives in the war. Stonehenge's mystery, or as one newspaper put it, its awe-inspiring vagueness, somehow felt right. Naturally, Hill decided to build a replica not of stone, but of his beloved concrete. More than two million pounds of it. He expected his concrete stones to last a thousand years. His Stonehenge included an altar stone, like the original on which it was then believed Druids sacrificed humans to the gods of war. Hill believed that despite human progress, we were still sacrificing our young to war gods. 
On July 4, 1918, before World War I had even ended, the altar stone of the monument was placed and dedicated. Thus, Mary Hill Stonehenge is thought to be the first World War I memorial erected in the United States. It wasn't finished for another decade. Mary Hill Stonehenge will likely baffle future archaeologists. The nearby hills means the rising sun cannot cast a shadow to mark the summer solstice as does the original, making it a kind of broken clock. Yet it offers us a place to contemplate human loss and the epic history of its beautiful setting. And amid such musings, we can take a minute to appreciate the eccentric millionaire who hoped to speed us up the road of human progress. Hear more about this episode on the Mossback Podcast. Just search Mossback wherever you listen.